Welcome into Seven Days to Die's Darkness Falls. We're going to talk about the installation of all the mods, and this is going to be the zero zero episode for my next run through Seven Days to Die's Darkness Falls. We're going to be using Alpha 20.5 B2's build in Seven Days to Die. We're going to be using the version 4.03A mod for Darkness Falls. We're going to talk about installing Darkness Falls. We're going to be using the Grumpyville Compo Pack, which is a, a city run, and we'll show that one on how to grab it, how to put it in. We're going to be using the No XP mod, which will restrict all normal access to XP. So when you craft things, when you kill zombies, all this stuff does not generate XP. At If you survive the day, at the end of the day at 4 a.m., when it becomes morning, you'll get another three levels. Then we'll make some changes to the Wandering Horde frequency configuration within Darkness Falls to uh, alter how often it throws extra hordes at us. So those are the things we're going to get. If you have any, I'm going to try to put chapters in this. It'll be the first time for me doing chapters. So come, let's take a look at it. Installation of Seven Days to Die will happen in the uh, Steam folders. Jump on into the uh, your Steam. Go ahead and do a search at the top for Seven Days. You'll find Seven Days to Die here. It's currently running at $7.50. Purchase that and do the regular install. It'll end up into your library under Seven Days to Die. Uh, I'm currently having it run in the background, but it'll come up as uh, install. Click on the install and it will install it for you. Once it's installed, you're good to go. You can start playing base Seven Days to Die. If you have never played Seven Days to Die before, I strongly suggest you play the base game first before you start playing with these mods. The mods are really going to test your knowledge and your uh, ability to maneuver and uh, a few other things to be, just be able to survive and craft. Uh, so do the basic seven days to die before you get into anything. Let's talk about installing the uh, seven days to die's darkness falls mod. To obtain the seven days to die's darkness falls mod, go into discord You'll want to go over to the Darkness Falls mod. If you can't find this and you need an invite, I've put an invite for you to this channel down below in the description. Go into the announcement underneath news and stuff. If you scroll all the way to the bottom and come up a little bit, you'll see that here's the most recent Darkness Falls mod. This is where he will post the most current versions should uh, Seven Days to Die upgrade from the Alpha 20.5 uh, B2. And you need to get something newer than the version 4.03A. In here is a description of what the mod is all about, and then there's some links. The first download link here is the one you'll probably want to use. Just click on it. It'll open up a, in your favorite browser, it'll open up a window, which will take you right to the mod. And in here, he has some very clear installation guide steps. When he talks about the three dots that you want to click on to get the download, that's these three up here in the upper right-hand corner. Click download as, as uh, zip. If you can't find it after it's downloaded, you can always come in here, look on downloads, and this will give you the list of all your most current downloads that you have done. Uh, here's the Darkness Falls. Click on the little folder to see where it's at. It'll open up your download folder, like this one here. Let me go back here and bring it back. And there it is. Now you need to find out where you're going to install Darkness Falls. To do that, you need to go back into Steam where you've done the install. Click, in, click underneath your library, look for seven days to die, right click it, click on properties. Properties will bring up this general tab like this, go to local files, then click on browse. You can go ahead and close this now that you've done that. There it is. This is the folder where you've got your installation of seven days to die. In there, you should have a mods folder. If you don't have a mod folder, that's fine. You can create one. Or you can just drag this on in here and drop it in. So we're going to double click on the Darkness Falls download that we did, which will open it up in our zip file. If you don't have a zip program to unzip the stuff, you try using 7-zip. It's good and it's free. The easiest way to do this is to grab all these files, drag them down, and just copy into the mods folder. When you're done, those all these mods should be in there. And now you should have yourself all set to go for seven days to die. One thing to note, there is two possible ways to launch seven days to die. This is also here. He talks about it in step seven. 
two ways to fire off seven days to die. One is to use a seven days to die exact application. The other one is just not easy EAC. This is the easy anti cheat. Um, seven days to die is not compatible with the EAC. So you need to make sure that you fire off seven days to die. So make sure you, that's the, the uh, version of the game that you're using. With that, your seven days to die is now installed. And you can play just the seven days to die. Next will be putting in the Grumpyville Compo Mac pack. To do the Grumpyville Compo Mac pack, it, come down in the Seven Days to Die's Darkness Falls Discord channel to this DF Modlets add-on. These are all mods that have been uh, previewed and approved for Seven Days to Die's Darkness Falls. When you look in here, you'll want to look for Grumpy. There it is, Grumpy Game, Seven Days to Die. Click on this GitHub. It'll bring up a, another website. And these are the mods that Grumpy's put together. You might find him uh, wandering around in the Discord if you have a desire to chat with him. Our last playthrough used the Grumpyville 6K map because Compo wasn't ready for it yet. Compo is now available. So you can just click on the Compo Pack map right here. That will take you here to this uh, this website to grab this, do the, the drop down of code, do download a zip. You will find that download over here in your downloads files when it's done. Click on this file to open it up. There it is. Now you need to go find your mods folder. You can do this. You should already be here if you're following this from the beginning, but if you're not, Go ahead and jump into your Steam library. Right-click on Seven Days to Die, Properties. When you get to the General tab, click on Local Files, and then Browse. This will open up where your mods are at. You can close out of that now if you want to. You want to take a look. Double-click on this. It'll bring up the, the Compo Pack Maps main. Double-click on it again. You want to see the four dash grumpy combo maps. Then down in your seven days to die, open up your mod folder, grab that, drop it in, copy there. When you've done that, you'll get the a four combo map, map down here. It'll be in your mods folder. Now it is selectable in game as an option for one of the maps you can create. For the no XP mod, you're going to be coming back into the Darkness Falls uh, Discord channel again. Click on the DF Modlets. Modlets come all the way down to the bottom. At the moment, here it is. It's on 611. It's the Darkness Fall no XP mode. Click on this. When you do, it'll just give you the download. So go ahead and take a look in your downloads. And you'll see the no XP file here. Just click on the uh, open file. Double click on it, and there's the mod. Again, we're going to install this mod into our folder for darkness for seven days to die as darkness falls. Uh, if you haven't, if you're not already there or familiar how to get there, go ahead and click on seven days to die in the Steam library. Right click on properties. When it brings up the general, click on local files, browse, and close this stuff out now. There it is, right there. There's your seven days to die install. I usually like to spread this stuff out. Grab this, make sure you've double clicked on mods in that file or section, grab this, bring it down, copy here, and it'll go on in and there it is. So now you've installed the no XP mod on top of your seven days to die as darkness falls in Grumpyville. Now let's look at one more thing that we can configure within seven days to die as darkness falls. And that is the wandering horde frequency. So if we go under seven days to die, we go to properties. Again, we're going to go to the same place we did before. It'll bring up a little general thing here. Locals, browse, and that'll put us into the, I'll close these things. This will bring us into the directory where the seven days to die is installed. There's our mods. Let's open up the mods. Underneath number three, the darkness falls wandering hordes patch. There is a wandering hordes frequency zip you can get from Discord that will add this function to the vanilla game, but it's already built into Darkness Falls. If you add this into Darkness Falls, you'll end up with some exceptions. And in fact, during my first set of gameplay, 
I think the first and third episodes or second and third episodes, you'll see some exceptions popping up. And it's because I added this as an extra mod. Don't do that. So within here, if you come into config, if you double click on blocks, it'll give you a chance to open it up in whatever editor you prefer. I'm going to select notepad. I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, maximize so we can see. Uh, it does go off the screen a little bit, but we'll, we don't have to worry about that. There's two things in here that we're curious about. This here, this is, and there's some comments right above it. This determines within what range will the game randomize a horde. In this particular case, I've got it set from anywhere between 4 and 48 hours. Um, I think it starts off with 20 to 24. So basically you get one additional horde every day at pretty much the same time. Um, I want more variety. I want more variability. I want to be I want to be somewhere thinking I'm safe and then all of a sudden I have some guys come showing up. So you're going to change this either to be, in this case, 4 to 48. So that means it's going to randomize somewhere between 4 and 48 hours from the beginning of this the game. It's going to say it's going to drop in a wandering horde and uh, I'm going to have to deal with it. And then it'll do it again once it triggers and does the 4 to 48 hours. The next thing in here is going to be this one here, which is Zombies Min and Max. This is going to determine how many zombies are going to be generated in that horde. Uh, so between the 4 and 48 hour time frame, it's going to throw anywhere from 2 to 50 zombies at me. Um, I think at the beginning it starts at 10 to 30. Uh, certainly enough to make you go, uh, excuse me? Uh, this is going to give me something from to, oh shit, run. <laughs> and so we'll see how this is going to work out. So this is my intent uh, for throwing some bigger and nastier stuff at me. And keep in mind, I'm getting no XP for all the things that I'm killing here. So, oh well. All right. So once you're done with that, save it. You're done with all the mods. All right. So now you've set up your Wandering Horde. You've set up your no XP. You've set up your Grumpyville. Let's start a new game. Start up your seven days to die. Remember that you're going to want to start it with the normal. I got a shortcut here. Let's take a look at the properties on it. Notice that I'm using the regular seven days to die dot exec and not the easy anti cheat version. Easy anti cheat will cause you problems. When we start up a new game, we just look underneath the game worlds. And then when you come back, you'll find Grumpyville. We're going to find the Grumpyville 6K CP. MP. This is the compo pack and it's actually intended for small multiplayers. And we're going to call this hand basket because we're going to go to hell in a hand basket here. <laughs> Underneath general, there's some number of things you can change here. All of this stuff is going to give you want to do multiplayer. You can do here. This is just your region, whether or not you want your server visible. Difficulty settings. This is just going to affect how tough the zombies are. So uh, if you put this up to a higher than warrior, if you go to warrior, it'll increase the amount of damage the zombies can take. Beyond that, it starts to affect how much damage you do. This is how far, how long you want the actual time to take for a 24-hour cycle. Let me set this at 60 minutes. This usually gives me enough time to cut things out and then it down to a 30 to 40 minute video, uh, episode per day if I'm going for that. Here's your daylight length. Uh, you may want to change this up or down. Uh, I'm going to keep it at the default. Maximum number of zombies. I'm going to increase this a little bit. It does have an impact on performance. I have brought it down uh, from, I think I initially started like way up high, uh, but I'm, I'm down to a point where I think I can manage my frames per second. The Grumpyville map is going to impact your frame per second rather significantly. So you're going to want to make sure your max zombies are somewhere where you can live with it. I'm going to keep the animals at a default 50. I'm going to turn up the claim amount to five. The claim amount is how many times you can put a claim block down before the last one is destroyed. So in this particular case, if you placed five claims down, on the sixth one you claim, the first one will be destroyed. So keep that in mind, but this allows you to have multiple bases around the map. Underneath basic, we're going to say how long or how often do you want the uh, horde to happen? We're going to do, of course, seven days to die every seven days. The blood rune moon range will add some variance. This is, uh, I used to think this used to be plus or minus. It's not, it's plus. So it's either seven or eight that the horde is going to happen. 
Um, this way I can't count on a hard hitting <laughs> and plan for it. There's a little bit of variance in there. So I want to add a little bit of the, uh, I got to check to see what it is. Uh, it will also increment based on the last horde. So if it happens on day eight, it's going to be day 15 or day 16 the next time. This is when I'm going to get the warning. This is going to be in the morning. The warning is going to be maybe a thunder, thunder strike. And then at the top, the numbers are going to turn red. This is how fast you want your zombies to run. You can have a regular walk during the day. I'm going to have them jog during the day. That's fine by me. At night, they're going to be sprinting. And this is Feral Sense. Feral Sense will be the ability of the zombies to detect you from a much greater distance. When this is on, as soon as darkness falls, you will start to attract any zombie that is uh, currently active from a couple of POIs away. It could take a little while for all the ones that actually detect you to run the distance to come get you. It, it is. It does cause a little bit of... Um, some terror when the night drops. However, in this particular case, because I've got so many other constraints going on, I'm just going to turn off Feral Sense. We had it on in the last episodes. So if you want to see some of those happen, feel free to go take a look. We're going to keep the profiles on. Now, here's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to change the XP multiplier to zero. This is just a safety factor. Your XP should already be mixed, but this is going to make sure that you don't get XP from any other source. Uh, so there's no cheating involved, people. Turn this down to zero so you don't get any extra XP. All the block damages underneath the advanced are going to set how well you do damage when you hit things. Um, I'm going to turn this up a little bit because uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time hammering away at stuff that uh, is not interesting and I have to cut out. I want it to be somewhat interesting for you all. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Uh, the AI damage is how much the damage the zombies do when they hit a block. And I'm going to give them a little bit of a boost on AI, on the Blood Moon. They're going to give a, a, a bonus of 25% damage. So instead of doing 100 damage, they'll do 125 block damage. So they're going to get through defenses a little bit faster. And there's a few creatures, a few zombies to do extra damage to blocks. Things like the construction zombies and the demolition zombies can chew through blocks fairly quickly. And if they're their demonic form, <laughs> they just walk through them like wheat. Uh, we're going to do a loot respawn time. I disable this because I don't believe in the loot fairies. Uh, I don't think if you've opened up a bag in the ground and, and looted it out that uh, if you come back 30 days later, somebody's come by and stuck another thing in the bag. Uh, so I'm going to disable this. The only thing I usually prefer to have respawn would be uh, like bird's nests. Like I get bird's nests respawning, but I don't get anything else respawning. This does have an impact, though, when you do a double loot. Double loot is when you go to a POI, you loot it out, you get a quest for the POI, you activate the quest, and the quest activation reloads the POI. So you could have burned the place to the ground, and when you reactivate the quest, boop, it's back. There are folks who have problems with that. My last run, I did a no duplicate run. So if I looted a place, I had to abandon a quest. If I'd taken a quest there before, I couldn't take a second quest because there was no resetting of POIs allowed. Uh, in this run, I'm going to go ahead and allow the res the the, uh, the respawning of a POI in general, uh, though specifically I will tend to avoid it if I can. Next is if you die, what's going to happen? Do you drop just your backpack? Do you drop just your tool belt? Do you drop everything? Do you drop nothing? I'm going to keep my equipped stuff and I'm going to drop the backpack. Partly, this is so if I'm in the wasteland, for example, and I respawn in the wasteland, I'm not killed by radiation before I can get somewhere to, to, to stop that because all of my radiation protection gear is dropped on the ground. Drop on quit is nothing. So that means if you leave the game world, will the stuff just drop at your feet? This is um, DayZ, I think, does this. Uh, there's a couple of games where when you log out, your body's there and it can be looted. This is basically the same sort of thing. We're going to keep the Blood Moon count to 24 enemies. I don't want to get uh, too many things on the on the board to, 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 to affect my frame rate. But it is up from the standard. I think it's uh, 12. No, it's 8. Yeah, it's 8. So we're going to be at 24. So that's uh, triple the normal horde size if you've been playing regular 7 Days to Die. Enemy spawning is whether or not we have zombies in the world. You might want to turn this off if you're doing creative. Of course, we're going to have this on. We're going to have airdrops on the default every three days. Airdrops can have special things in them like uh, mastery books, beakers, lathes, uh, all the loot on drops, uh, loot only drops 
that could be an airdrop so we're going to keep that on and i think we're going to mark them as well so they're on the map uh, it only keeps them though for so long and then you have to get you have to either clear a previous airdrop to see the next the, the older one or get nearby to see it we're going to go ahead and mark these so that i can when they come down i'll mark them on the map cheat mode is if you want to turn on the uh various debug stuff that, that's available in the game uh, we won't be turning that on there's really not a whole lot to do underneath multiplayer unless you're actually playing multiplayer. I will not. But uh, in this one, it's whether or not you can shoot. You got friendly fire, kill the strangers, allies only, no killing. Well, we'll just put on kill everyone because. Claim size is how big when you put down a, a claim block will that area cover. I'm going to cover 71 blocks. It's really not that much impact. It's not very impactful here, but in a multiplayer game, this will determine how close somebody else can get to you before they can drop their own claim block. You cannot overlap block zones. So in this particular case, uh, 71, a 7x7 seven seven square area, if somebody else came in to drop a claim block, they'd have to drop it at least seven squares away from your edge before they can get their claim down. This is a dead zone of how much extra space has to be between those claim sizes, which we don't have to worry about it. The claim duration is if you log off the game, how long will your claim last before it decays and destroys itself? That's 30 days because, well, I'm not multiplayer, but it doesn't have to worry. You can also have decay. So in effect, uh, when you have items within your claim zone, you build up a base, a concrete's 5,000. Uh, if somebody came to beat on that block, you will get bonus health if it's in your claim zone. Right now, you can see the claim health online, offline here being at four times. That means that somebody would have to chew through 20,000 points to break a 5,000 point block. But as it decays over time, because of the, the land claim is, is dropped, it'll start to whittle away that 20,000 till it eventually gets down to 5,000. Bedroll de uh, dead zone. Then when you drop your bedroll, the last bedroll you put down is your active bedroll and is the where you will respawn. This will suppress any zombie spawning in the area. So in this particular case, within 30 blocks, wherever I put my bedroll down, no new zombies will spawn. If there are zombies in a POI, for example, those zombies stay until you clear them out, but they won't respawn after three, four or five days somewhere like that. This is how long it will be in effect after you've logged off, and then whether or not you share some XP. We're not sharing any XP anyway, and then there's my game port A. <laughs> Have fun with that, right? All right, so once all that's done, you can go ahead and start your game. Uh, we will we will wait before we start this game. It'll be in the next episode. But uh, come back and join me. Now we have set up the entire game scenario for this playthrough, and hopefully if you're just looking for an install, you got some useful information out of it. Take care. Bye-bye. Creeping through the shadows and the corners of your mind. I go where the wind blows. I run, but I don't hide. I hear the call of the wild. Whispering the name. No, I can't be tamed. My heart belongs to the night. I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone. I'm alone, I'm a lone wolf. I'm a lone wolf. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lone wolf. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lone wolf. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lone wolf. I'm a, I'm a. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a